G'day and welcome back to RC Model Reviews. Today, by request, I'm reviewing the NASA Light Multirotor Flight Controller uh, with GPS. It comes with or without the GPS option. I got one with the GPS option, as you can see just here. Let me pull up a bit. There's the little GPS antenna, which also contains the compass. So you get your flight controller. You get the leads that will connect your flight controller to your receiver, and it will work with SBUS or standard PWM, which is what I've got set up here, standard PWM, because I want to also run some channels out for a gimbal later on. Uh, makes it easy to do it when you just uh, do it this way. I might use the try the inbuilt gimbal controller because it does have uh, that ability. We'll try it out later and see how we get on. But a look at the basics today, just the basics. So there is the NASA light flight controller. It, apparently it is the same hardware as the NASA M. It's just got different firmware, less competent firmware, and that was pretty noticeable when I test flew this. Right, um, points that I immediately noticed was it's, it's a nice, tidy little thing. It's about the same size as the FreeSky X8R receiver, so it's not a big thing. It's encased in plastic, so it's protected, and obviously moisture, and that's less likely to be an issue, rather than when you compare it to something like the old uh, the Naze boards, which, uh, you know, have traditionally there's a Naze board, Bare boards, these are of course a lot less sophisticated in terms of the packaging, but um, this is intended to be for a different market. It's not for your racing mini quad, it's for your camera platform, because this includes three flight modes. There's manual, which is rate mode. Yes, that's right, it's got rate mode. There is the ATTI mode, I think it is, which is like self-leveling, stabilizing. That's the mode a lot of people will find. And it has the GPS assisted ATTI mode, which basically means it has position hold, and altitude hold and things like that. So yeah, this has got a barometer in it and it uses the GPS as well. So it's kind of, you know, an entry level intelligent GPS based flight controller and it's priced accordingly. So what did I find when I was installing this? Well, uh, not a lot. One thing I didn't like was that this GPS setup here, there's, there's no um, actual way to mount this carbon rod inside the little base plate or the top of this. It's a loose fit and if you just put it in there, it swivels around, falls off. So I've just put some duct tape around here for the time being. It would be nice if there was a little grub screw or some other thing. Perhaps you could use heat shrink. But either way, considering that having this aligned properly is pretty important. You don't want it t turning relative to the flight controller because then you'll get toilet bowling and all sorts of nasty things. Um, it's pretty how you going. Uh, see, even that one with the duct tape, there's still a bit of wiggle in there. And that may explain why I'm get still getting toilet bowling with this setup as it stands now. And I'll tell you a little bit about toilet bowling in a moment, what that is, and generally what causes it. But suffice to say, it's not a good thing. It's not a good thing. But there you go. So this also comes with, if I just pull down here a little bit, this little box here, which has bright LED, very, very bright LED. Uh, it has the beck in it to power the system. And it also has a control that goes off here to the, or lead that goes to the flight controller, which basically enables the flight control to change this LED, because this LED will blink different rates, different colors, to tell you the status of your system. Pretty simple. And on this side of it, it has, if I can get around here, whoop, focus, we've got a little micro USB connector that's used for setting up, tuning, and updating the firmware. So, yeah, there's not much to this package, not many pieces, and it all does seem to plug together quite nicely. All these Plugs here are nicely keyed, polarized, so you can't plug them in the wrong way around. It has the facility to handle up to six. I think, what has it got here? Motor six, up to six. So I could fly a hexacopter as well. You can see on the flight controller there, it has uh, motors one through six. And then it has the gimbal outputs, which are X1 and X2. That says in the manual they're designed to drive servos, but really, I don't know. Um, <laughs> servo gimbals are a little bit old school. Right. Um, my experiences in setting this up were great quite straightforward, I plugged it in. I went online to the, uh, well actually I went, plugged my laptop in to set up the channels and everything, but I found it it's really is quite a limited flight controller. I was expecting a little bit more. For example, it has a return to home facility, but if you set it up on a three position switch, you've got a choice of the rate mode, the self-leveling mode, and the GPS assist mode, but failsafe will only work when you set up failsafe and turn your transmitter off. I don't really want to turn off my transmitter to bring my quad back for obvious reasons. So you could fudge around and set it up on another switch, but it's not that easy. It'd be nice if there was a separate channel that simply handled the failsafe. Then people could put their three modes on one three position switch and their failsafe on a another two position switch without too much trouble, but it doesn't have that. So pretty limited. Um, I can do some fancy mixing in my Tyrannus and achieve that, but you know, why should you have to? 
It's not hard stuff. It's not rocket science. They could just, you've got extra channel input on here, use that. Hmm, I don't know. Anyway, that's by the by. So I set it up out of the box. The tuning was really loose. It was actually quite hard to fly this quad because everything was so loose there just was not enough gain. Now I assume that's because it's designed for a different size frame perhaps or they just have defaults which have to start somewhere. So it was very loose. I went back and I tightened things up and it flies better but there's still, because you only have a gain, you don't have PID, you just have gain, um, you can't tune it as well as you can tune an A's board. I'll take it outside now and fly it. I've adjusted the gains a bit but I'll show you some of the things that I'm not that fussed about in terms of the why this thing flies. Welcome back and it's hat cam time for the test flight of the NASA Lite. Now I've, I've done a pretty simple bodgy setup here. I've got a balance lead connection for the power for the flight controller so I'll just plug that in. Hopefully you can see this and then we have the main setup there. Now I'll stand back a bit. We can see that the LEDs are flashing. I'll go to GPS mode and so it still hasn't got satellites yet when it's just a green flash then we have enough satellites to proceed it gives you an idea of how quickly it will acquire those satellites still waiting um, i think it has a battery backed almanac in the gps what that means is it should remember roughly where the satellites were so the first there we go now we've got enough satellites to fly look at that that didn't take very long didn't take very long at all so what i'm going to do now is go back to the manual mode and you see the lights go out if i go to the att mode we get a flashing orange LED. I hope the hat cam's picking that up. If we go to manual mode, there's no LED at all. Now arming is really quite simple. It's just, here we go, I'll take off. Now this flies just like you'd expect any model with rate mode to fly. It is pretty, yeah, the tuning needs some work. So there we go, it's um, not much wind today, so I just let it hover here. You can see my inputs, my shaky hands. Could do with some expo on the transmitter actually, because it is, it doesn't have any expo, so you notice the slightest little bit of input. And of course it's going up and down. There's no there's no position hold, there's no altitude hold. This is totally right mode. So it's all down to how well the pilot flies it, which in my case, not that flash, but it flies okay. We've got, it's quite responsive actually, I've got to say. So yeah, I've got no problems with that. That flies as you expect any quad in rate mode to fly, not a problem. Right. So now I'm going to change the mode to the ATTI mode, which is the self-leveling um, assist mode. There's no GPS in this, we'll try it again. Immediately I notice the throttle is much less responsive, but it is self-leveling now. If I push forward and let go, it pops back by itself, go to left, push go, and it's much softer on the sticks. There is much less response to the sticks. It's like the system is overriding the input to quite a degree. So, but it, it is much softer. Um, you can see it here, it's sort of not going up and down nearly so much. I'm just, I notice actually that it um, doesn't seem to be trimmed that well. It's, well, I've got a bit of breeze and it's drifting backwards, but ultimately it's, it's nice and flyable in this mode. The shaking is my thumbs because of my Parkinson's. So don't worry about that, it's not the tuning. There you go, that seems to be flying quite nicely and it is really easy to hold in position like this. That's fine, so what I'll do now is I shall land and I shall switch to the GPS mode. Disarm, now we'll switch to GPS mode and we should see that light change to green. There we go, that means we've got enough satellites. I will arm and take off. So now we should have altitude hold and position hold. I'll just fly out a bit so we get a bit further away from ourselves because I don't really trust these things. Okay, so this is now in altitude hold and position hold. And you notice it's toilet bowling. Now I've recalibrated the compass several times. The alignment of the, and it's coming down. Why is it coming down? I thought we were trying to get it to stay. I don't know why, it just doesn't seem to, it's just not really responding the way I'd expect it to. It doesn't, it's very sensitive. I'm trying to get one click up. Well, not, I don't have click on my throttle, but it seems like it doesn't want to do altitude hold very well at all. Perhaps it's going to do it now. No, it's going up and down. Of course, there is a certain degree of yo-yo um, in this, and I haven't tuned the altitude gain, but it has drifted away. I mean, it, this is all being it's supposed to be hovering in front of me, and it's drifting away. It's coming back. So I'd say, from the perspective of altitude hold and position hold, it's not really that flash, actually. 
maybe that's a function of it being the light version, not the full NASA M. They tell me the algorithms have been detuned somewhat for the light version. But I mean, it's acceptable. It's not an expensive flight controller, and it is holding position reasonably well. Now, the big question is, should I dare to turn it off and see if it will do a return to home? That's got to be a real test, doesn't it? Turn the transmitter off, will it return to home? Well, this is the, I've never tried this, let's just try it. Transmitter's off, fail safe. Is it going to come back and land? Or is it going to bugger off? Well, it's going up. And there's a flyaway, no, it's supposed to go up to 20 metres and then come down again. Certainly going up. Is it going to come down? Or is it going to go away to China? Climbs to that altitude to avoid hitting things on the way back. You notice it's still toilet bowling a little. When is it going to come? Here we go, it's coming down, it's coming down. It's not too bad. It's not going to be too far away from the launch point. It's actually taking quite big steps in its descent, so it might bounce a bit when it hits the ground. Let's have a look and see. No, no. Here we go. And will it turn off? Yes. Well, that was successful. So there you go. That's basically explored the operation. And you see my transmitter is still off. I turned it off. That was the fail safe functionality. Let's close the throttle. Do that and turn it back on again. Welcome to Toronto's. There we go. We're back in manual mode. So, yeah, um, I'd have to say it depends on how much you value your money. But it does work as advertised. It's not the steadiest, most slick flight controller, but it does give you the functions that you probably want, which is your position hold, albeit a bit wobbly, rate mode, and assisted self-leveling mode, and that all-important return to home in the event of failure. And it has also a battery monitor on here. I'm just going to take off again, do a bit more flying, because I want to show you the battery monitor. Again, we're in rate mode now. I'm just, it just feels more comfortable in rate mode to me, because I'm a mini quad flyer. You notice there's no blinking of the LED at the moment because it indicates we're in rate mode. Eventually this LED should turn to red to, to tell us that the battery is low. Now the battery is fully charged but this quad is quite heavy and it's only got a relatively small 3 cell on it. So I'm expecting that it will um, start flashing red anytime soon. If not, I'll just cut out the bit where you, we both stand and watch as this thing hovers for hours. <laughs> Now one thing I've noticed which may be associated with the tuning is that the yaw does produce quite a bit of um, climb or descent. I'll, see I put, that generally implies the eye is too high. Um, I may need to do more tuning because when I yaw to the left it climbs. Quite violently actually. And there we go. I saw the little red lead light which means we're getting low on battery. And it'll probably come on flash full time fairly shortly. But um, all that wobbling about is just me. I'm trying to wear the battery out. So don't worry about the wobbling. It's in full rate mode. I'm trying to wear out the battery. No. Now it does have a couple of options when your battery gets low. There's two stages of low battery detection. One is the, uh, the flashing of the red light and the other one is an automated function which can be either return home, there we go, we've just, oh, again, uh, it will, it's level two of the low battery, you can program it to simply descend under power or to return home and land. Now this is level one, the LED, red LED is flashing intermittently, so we're going to land it ourselves, but um, there you go. So there we go, the NASA light. It does what it says on the box, can't grizzle too much about that. This, by the way, is the quad lugs system. This frame um, is made from half inch timber and the plastic components that quad lugs uh, sell. Really brilliant idea for testing stuff like this. You can build anything you like out of it. It's like the Meccano for quadcopters. And of course, because it's, most of the parts are made of wood, if you break it, it's not a big deal. You just go and buy another bit of wood. Um, simple as. So yeah, there we go. It's not a precise flight controller. Didn't expect it to be because it's budget. It does what it says on the box. It um, seems to return home, which is one of the big things. And so I'd have to say, um, the only downside, I, and this is only a personal thing, I've got to say this is a personal thing, 
I really hate the fact that in order to use their software to tune the flight controller and configure it, you've got to register with DJI. Why? Why? Why do I have to register? Why do you need to know about me? Why, I mean, why can't I just install the software and run it? What's going on there? I, I have my concerns about DJI as a company and the amount of data they collect through their flight controllers. This one, of course, doesn't collect logs or anything like that that we know of. It's got no connection, no permanent connection with the internet. The only time it connects is when you want to do an update through the little micro USB connector on the side and there's no indication it sends any data back to, to DJI. But all the same, I just get peeved that I have to register to do something that shouldn't require registration. But in, you know, if you're looking for a cheapy flight controller that's going to work and it's backed by the name DJI, which these days is pretty good. Used to be DJI was synonymous with Flyaway, but these days, solid product, reliable product. And of course, there is the potential to upgrade these to a full NASA M, which makes them more accurate. Um, and I think a few more features as well. So that's something to consider. Um, I'm not going to do the upgrade today. I may do it in the future and do a comparison so we can see what it compares. I do have a NASA M over here. Perhaps in a coming video, I will use the NASA M and we'll just compare. We'll swap from NASA M to NASA Lite and look at the difference in performance, accuracy, um, and so forth. In the meantime, that's it. If you've got questions, comments, you know, all the usual things, put them you know where, and I'll do my best to answer them. And in the meantime, thank you for watching. Time to get on and do some other stuff here at the studio. Bye for now. Oh, by the way, if you've got any, any reviews you really want to see, let me know. This was an asked for review, and I had this sitting here, so I did it. But if you've got something you want to see reviewed, let me know, and I'll try and accommodate you. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.